All right, now we're looking at uh, the free response number four on the AP Statistics 2021 first administration exam. As usual, any mistakes, please check the description below or leave a comment if you see there's a mistake that hasn't been pointed out yet. The manager of a large company that sells pet supplies online wants to increase sales by encouraging repeat purchases. The manager believes that if past customers are offered $10 off their next purchase, then 40% of them will place an order. To investigate the belief, 90 customers who placed an order in the past year are selected at random. Each of the selected customers sent an email with a coupon for $10 off the next purchase if the order is placed within 30 days. Of those who receive a coupon, 38 place an order. Is there convincing statistical evidence at a significance level of alpha 0.05 that the manager's belief is correct? Complete the appropriate inference procedures to support your answer. Okay, so we he thinks that if I give him a coupon, I expect a 40% of them. So the, in, the quantity of interest that we're wondering is this 40% number. And this is a proportion. This is not a specific number. So this is a proportion test. Okay, this is a one proportion test because I've only done one sample of things, right? I don't have two proportions. I didn't randomly select two samples. So let's verify uh, the conditions. There are generally three conditions we always look like, look at. One is, um, let's see, um, independence. Independence would occur is if um, the um, sample size, oops, sample size is less than or equal to 10% uh, of the population. Here, he sends it to 90 customers. And do we think it's less than or equal to 10% of the population? Well, I mean, basically, is there at least 900 customers? It's a large company. It sells pet supplies online. I'm going to assume that it's reasonable to assume the population of customers uh is greater than or equal greater than or equal to 900. So I think this condition is is fine. That's the independence condition. Okay, what's the other one? Uh, norm randomness. This one's easy. Let's see. Selected at random. It's given. Usually it's given in the problem statement for the randomness, but yeah, they're randomly selected. The last is the normality condition. And for proportion tests, the normality condition is, the, remember, we're approximating a, we're taking a binomial distribution, we're approximating as a normal distribution. And in order to do that, we need the number of successes and the number of failures to be greater than or equal to 10. Uh, it's kind of fuzzy on that exact number. I think in AP statistics, we use 10 as the threshold. Now, normally that's given as n times p and n times 1 minus p. In this case, the number of successes is 38 is greater than or equal to 10. And then the number of failures, that means the people who didn't take the coupon would have been uh, 52 because the 90 total is greater than or equal to 10. That's also fine. So we're good on there. You can also do it as n times p, n times 1 minus p. You should get those same numbers because n times p is just the number of people who did redeem the coupon. And n times 1 minus p is the number of people who did not redeem that coupon. So the conditions are met. So let's do our null hypothesis is he thinks that um, it's 40%, more than 40%. So he wants to prove that the proportion is greater than 0 0.4. And our null hypothesis will be that it is 0.4. Technically 0.4 or less would be fine, but equal to 0.4 and greater than 0.4 is um, the is the hypothesis testing here. Now we're gonna do a run one prop Z test. I usually try to write all the things. We have a sample size of um, 90 and the number of successes is, uh, what was that, 38? 38 people did, right? 38 people placed the order within 30, okay. And so let us um, pull up the calculator here and we're gonna do stat tests, one prop Z test. Note that uh, the we always do um, one prop Z tests, or a Z, it's always a Z test for uh, proportions. 
because it is always a normal approximation. X is 38, N is 90, and we care about whether it's greater than P0, and we're going to calculate. And so here, um, let's just calculate the zest st test statistic. So our p hat, our sample value, is 0 0.4222. This was, if you want to hand calculate that, it is 38 divided by 90. Our z statistic is 0 0.43, and our p value is equal to 0 0.333. Now, this is greater than alpha. So there's a not enough evidence, not enough evidence to, to conclude that P is uh, greater than 0 0.4. Okay. Uh, anything else I want to say? More than 40%? Yeah, I think that's not enough evidence to conclude that. that that's what you would say. You failed, in other words, we say we failed to reject H0. Based on your conclusion from part A, which of the two errors, type 1 or type 2, could have been made? Interpret the consequence. The way I like to remember type 1 or type 2 is I remember which one is true. Okay, so if we, we concluded that H0 uh, was true, that, I, I know it's not exactly true, we failed to reject, uh, don't get working on the terminology, but in my mind, we basically said H0 we had, didn't have enough evidence to say the second one is true. So we said this one is true. But it, so the reality is that maybe this one really was true and we made a mistake. We should have rejected it, but we did not reject it. Okay? That's what the that means this one is actually true. Okay? So actually let me write it down here cuz I'm going to upload these as notes. So HA is actually true. So what we would have made is a type 2 error, because the way I remember it is the type 2 error means the second one was true. So this is a type 2 error. Type 2 error is possible. And that is we um, failed to reject H0 when we should have. And that means, basically what that would mean is that the true proportion is greater than, point five, is greater than 0 0.4, but we uh, did not have enough evidence evidence to conclude that. The end result, the big picture, is that we um, we think basically that the ten ten dollar off coupon is less effective than it really was. The ten dollar off coupon was more effective than we concluded. So we concluded that the coupon wasn't didn't was a, wasn't forty percent or better, but really it actually was. It actually was pretty good. It was um, getting some return customers there.